Hello, my name is Jeff Mailman, and I am the chair of the Chamber's Local Issues Committee. And I will be moderating this conversation with the candidates for uh, Redondo Beach City Treasurer, brought to you by the Redondo Beach Chamber of Commerce. There are two candidates running for this seat on the March 7th ballot, and today I'll be interviewing Eugene Solomon. Both candidates for the seat will be asked the same questions, and we'll spend a total of 30 minutes speaking with them about their vision for the future of Redondo Beach. Eugene, let's get started with your one minute intro. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I want to take this opportunity, especially thank Mara, you, Jeff, Dominic, and the Redondo Beach Chamber of Commerce for this opportunity to share thoughts with the voters. Uh, Redondo Beach is an amazing place to live, work, play. I fell in love with the city from the first time I set foot in town way back in 1985. Uh, in my 30 years of living here, I've seen many changes, uh, made countless friends, volunteered thousands of hours. I've grown a successful South Bay business and seen children and friends, customers uh, have their children grow up, their children have children and grow up. Uh, I value Redondo as a precious resource in all of our lives, and I'm working to improve our community. It's very important to me. Um, having worked as a licensed financial advisor and as a 30-year owner-operator of a finance and risk management business, I feel most qualified for the city treasurer role. I've worked on initiatives that have saved the city taxpayers millions of dollars. Uh, the Budget and Finance Commission subcommittee I created initiated the process to restructure our pension debt and save the city an estimated $100 million. Currently serving on the Budget and Finance Commission, Vice Chairman of the Charter Advisory Review Committee, member of the General Plan Advisory Committee, Advisory Board Member for the Parkland Conservancy. And I look forward to our discussion today and ready for any questions that you might have. Terrific. Well, thanks for that intro. Appreciate it. Uh, why don't we kick off with our first question, which is, please share your top two to three priorities for the city of Redondo Beach if you're elected city treasurer. Uh, and what are your plans to accomplish them? How do you make that happen? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think the top two priorities, number one, is working with the Charter Advisory Review Committee and the City Council to update the critical roles and responsibilities outlined in the Moss Adams Report presented to us four years ago. This is an independent auditor that we hired to review a number of different uh, tactical and logistical items within our city, especially within the finance department, the city treasurer's office, and the city clerk's office. Uh, the report outlined roles uh, between the treasurer and the finance department that they described as ill-defined, informally delegated, and subject to confusion and high risk of error. And I think as a top priority, this should be addressed right away uh, to bring to the Charter Review Committee, work with the finance director and talk with uh, city council. Also, I think uh, a top priority is quite frankly, just meeting with the deputy treasurer uh, and the finance team, the city manager. Let's do a SWOT analysis. Let's examine our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, those threats, try and build a, a team atmosphere or camaraderie so that we can all work together to make this office the most efficient and transparent city treasurer's office in the history of Redondo Beach. So those would be the top two priorities I think we'd have. Uh, one other one I think that we would have is uh, more transparency, which we can address later on. But when's the last time you saw a city treasurer have a community meeting? Uh, when's the last time you saw a city treasurer at uh, one of our city council members' uh, community meetings? want to be present and available, uh, pull back the curtain and be more transparent. Those are my top two or three priorities. Great. Thank you. Um, our next question is, what is the city treasurer's role in overseeing and protecting the city's finances? And what are your specific plans to protect city funds? Thanks for the question. Uh, when the charter was reformed about eight years ago, the city charter, uh, it reduced the day-to-day -day operations of the city treasurer's office. Uh, we outsourced our investment management uh, to FHN. Uh, there's a gentleman named Rick Phillips, who's our liaison in La based out of Las Vegas. It'd be my role to work with FHN and oversee suggested trades, portfolio balancing to ensure we remain in compliance with investment policy ratios, strict adherence to our safety, liquidity, and guide require, uh, excuse me, uh, yield, liquidity, and safety requirements. Also an internal compliance uh, policy, a uh, calendar that we would have, it's crucial. It's to avoid maturities coming due without a plan for the funds. 
Uh, I've worked as a licensed financial advisor. I've talked, taken regulatory exams, talked to members of the industry. I'm fluent in the language and the lingo of the investment advisory industry. Uh, I know the terminology. I know how it works. I know how markets work and I know how to respond. So I'm ready on day one to have those conversations with Rick, our investment advisory, to have those conversations with our financial services department, with our city manager. Uh, my work history and training in this area, uh, I'll be able to ramp up and be ready on day one with the velocity necessary to take on this role. The tactical duties of this role have mostly been sourced out to the financial services department. So going back to our first note, it's important to go ahead and clarify those roles and responsibilities. Being a business owner for the last 30 years, I know accounting principles, cash flow analysis, the policies needed to protect the city revenues. As an auditor, I, I'll, I'll be in an oversight role and I'll work closely with the deputy treasurer and the new finance manager to make sure that we are on top of this, as I said, from day one. Great, thank you. Uh, as an elected city treasurer, do you believe that you work for the city, uh, the city council, the residents, and, and why do you take that position? What, what accountability does the city treasurer's office have to the residents of Redondo Beach? Well, I think uh, as an elected treasurer, we work for the residents. Uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility to taxpayers and to the city to be a vigorous steward of our finances. But at the end of the day, we answer to the voters. And if I'm not doing my job, then they're going to fire me. And I have to be cognizant of that and be responsive to all of their needs. Uh, we're constantly audited, reviewed, and held account to every dollar and decimal, uh, as we should be. Transparency and efficiency an accountability come with this role and I'm prepared for that. And I wanna be re held responsible for those things. Responsibility, accountability, dependability. I'll be rad, I'll be the rad treasurer. Uh, being the best for residents to Redondo is a standard and that's what I hope to achieve. Uh, once elected, I know our residents expect the best, they deserve the best and I'm here to provide those results. Great. And, you know, as you know, not all cities have an elected city treasurer. What do you believe are the advantages and or disadvantages for Redondo Beach having an elected city treasurer? I think this is a really great question and a conversation that we should be having with the public. It's a conversation that we've had uh, at the Charter Advisory Review Committee, where I'm vice chairman. Uh, we have a portfolio that exceeds $100 million. In order to be the Redondo Beach city treasurer, you have to be a registered voter and have lived in the city for 30 days. That's it. There's no need for any expertise or training in the complexities of managing a large investment portfolio. Now, fortunately, I've worked as a licensed financial advisor and I have this training. I've taken the regulatory exams, but not every person who may take on this role would have that uh, experience and knowledge. So I think what we wanna do is to have the voters weigh in. If the voters want to weigh in and amend the city charter and add professional qualifications and experience, such as we have for our city clerk and our city attorney, that could be one solution. Uh, we could have a vote uh, for the residents to weigh in and say, we're not interested in having an elected treasurer any longer. We would want to go with the appointed treasurer. Uh, that's another option. This is ultimately for the voters to decide. In the past, the voters have taken the path of downsizing the role, where the city treasurer's office had many people, we're now down to two. Uh, it's gone from a full-time role to a part-time role. So the office has devolved in many respects. Uh, if that works for the voters, if that system works for the voters, it should remain that way, but they should have the opportunity to weigh in. Great. Uh, what do you believe is the most challenging part of crafting a city budget? And then please explain how you would deal with that in, in your critical role. Uh, city treasurer mainly works on the revenue side and doesn't typically uh, delve into the expenditure side of things. That's uh, the purview of the finance department, city manager, and the city council. Uh, as treasurer, I feel our role is to help find ways to maximize revenue and distribute that revenue to the various customers of our office. 
So we earn investment income each month, and then that investment income is distributed to various interests, the general fund, the Thailand's funds, the Uplands funds, wastewater uh, funds, intergovernmental grants, and so on. So with a better producing investment portfolio, following the yield safety and liquidity guidelines, we can produce more fiscal opportunities in the budget. And then that would help the expenditure side uh, for the city council and the city manager uh, to work with. So with the question being um, uh, the idea of the challenging part of the city budget, we're required by law, the city is required by law to have a balanced budget. Uh, our part from the treasurer's office is to make sure that the revenues are being booked appropriately, uh, do what we can to try and maximize within strict guidelines, the revenues generated to provide for the budget. Great. Um, we're about halfway through our time, but we, we only have two questions left. So we're we're moving along at a pretty good clip here. You bet. Um, Let's go to our second to last question, well, just about, which is uh, what specific skills would you bring to the city treasurer's office? I know you talked a little bit uh, in your intro, but what specific skills would you uh, bring to that? Office? I'm proactive and I'm a problem solver. I'm the person who believed that we could restructure our pension debt. I formed a subcommittee when I was the chairman of the Budget and Finance Commission. And the conversation we had was an extensive one about whether or not even a subcommittee could be created or should be created, not could, but should. And the conversations were, why would you wanna do that? We're wasting our time, nothing can be done. And I am not going to accept that as an answer. I think that we can be proactive, that the city can make plans, that the city can accomplish big things. And that is my role. And that is how I will act within within this role as city treasurer. Uh, I just don't want it to be a paperweight role where you come in and you're and you're not you're you're, just, you're not managing much more than just the day-to-day -day operations. I want to be proactive. I want to be an auditor. I want to review. I want to work as a as a critical component of what makes the city better to generate revenues and to manage our investments. Uh, I've run a successful multi-million dollar business for the last 30 years. I've worked as a licensed financial advisor. I know how markets work. I've worked hand in glove with our staff on other initiatives that have saved taxpayer dollars, such as restructuring our procurement process. Six years ago, when I was first put on the Budget and Finance Commission, I immediately identified areas within our municipal code and our charter that could use updating that would save staff time and save taxpayer dollars. My mission statement is going to be efficiency and transparency, can do, not can't do. So I'll take these 30 years as a successful entrepreneur, financial professional, and put that experience into practice in this role, saving the city dollars, generating revenues. I'm ready to go day one, I'm prepared for it. Great. You, and you, you just touched on our next question, which is related to transparency. You know, when, when dealing with city funds, transparency is really critical. Uh, what will you do to make sure that the public has easy and clear access to how the city's finances work and, and how the treasurer's office works? Well, I've touched on this a little bit, and I think it's really important that there be more transparency. I often hear in the, in the public ether out there in the social media and other places where people are exchanging concerns and ideas that, well, the city's having trouble uh, financially, or there's a problem, how are we gonna pay for this? And I wanna pull back the curtain on all of that. Uh, the city has a double A plus credit rating. Our city budget is required to be balanced every year. We have a $110 million portfolio of book value. The city's financial health is good. Uh, and I wanna try and change the narrative and introduce the narrative that we're in good shape. We can be better and we will improve, but the city's in good shape, pull back that curtain. So as I touched on before, I think it's important to be part of the city budget workshops uh, that we do in May and June, to attend those uh, budget and finance commission meetings where we're discussing the budget, to be available to answer questions about our revenues and our different buckets that are going to be available to pay for some of the things that we want to do, like police and fire services or capital improvement projects. Uh, I'll be present at city council, and I'd like to hold some community meetings. 
I don't know if anybody will show up. I hope everybody shows up. But I want to make that available for those people who are interested in learning about what's happening with our finances. Break it down. I call it our financial fun facts. And I'm going to have some financial fun facts on a regular basis to talk about our TOT, to talk, which is our transit occupancy tax, to talk about how our property taxes get funneled from the city to the state to the county, to talk about how things get funneled and sales tax from the county and back to us. I think more public input, more public availability, more public transparency. We owe it to the voters. Uh, as you can see, uh, their their input is going to be very important to me. You have 15 minutes left and you have plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, we have plenty of time. Um, actually, you know, we're, we're sort of wrapping up here. Um, uh, our final question is, uh, is there anything that we haven't mentioned that you do want to discuss about the treasurer's role and, and your position and uh, your campaign? Uh, I would like to uh, mention a couple of things. One is the efficiency of time that you're seeing here in my responses to the question will be reflected in the efficiency of my office once I'm elected as city treasurer. And this is the way I approach things in a pragmatic, practical, straightforward way. You, ana you analyze, you implement, and you follow through. And then you go ahead and you organize what the results are and you make changes as need be to the programming that you've been put. This is the practical business-like approach that I will bring to the city treasurer's office. I really appreciate this opportunity uh, to discuss this with you, my philosophy for the city treasurer's role. Uh, beyond my own election, I would like to raise awareness of the idea that we have various charter changes on the ballot. And so we haven't discussed that, but I think it's very important for the community as a whole these changes help modernize many sections of our charter that haven't been updated in decades, some of which haven't been updated since 1949. I authored as part of my role as vice chairman on the city uh, charter review committee, the CA1 and CA2 amendments. These changes create a more efficient and responsive local government, save valuable staff time and significant taxpayer dollars, efficiency and transparency moving towards the best government that we can have in Redondo Beach. Uh, these charter amendments are unanimously approved by the Charter Advisory Group, the City Council for placement on the ballot. There is no opposing argument for them. Appointed and elected leaders in our city feel these changes will improve our community and our quality of life. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. I wanna thank all the members of the community that have been supporting me throughout this process. I've been walking the streets, talking to lots of people, uh, and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, and I'm a better person for going through this experience with the residents and in situations like this where I get to speak with our local chamber of commerce. Uh, it makes me a better person, a better member of our community. Uh, I wanna thank all the members of the Budget and Finance Commission for unanimously endorsing me, my fellow members, all seven of us, uh, six plus me uh, have endorsed this process and would like to see me in this role to visit with them on a monthly basis as their next city treasurer. Uh, I'm also supported and endorsed by Mayor Brand and a majority of the city council members. Uh, I want to thank you very much. want to encourage everybody to go vote. It's very important. And I want to thank everybody who's joining Team Eugene, the man who saved Redondo Beach $100 million by initiating the process to restructure our pension debt. Great, thank you, Eugene. Um, unfortunately, our time is up, but I'd like to thank you for spending your time with us. Uh, best of luck on March 7th. And I'd like to remind everybody that the taped interviews with all the candidates that are on the ballot will be available soon on YouTube. And uh, thank you very much to, to Eugene, to Mara, to everyone who's watching, and uh, please get out there and vote. It's uh, it's. A, critical, it's important for our community. Please vote, thank you. Thank you.